Good morning, Counter-Strike fans. You know what time it is. That's right. It scores on the mother fluffing doors time. Uh, if you don't know what this series is, then like piss off and go and check another scores on the doors video out. Then you'll know what's going on. Um, and I'm just going to crack straight into it. We've got some fantastic storylines to talk about. Let's just fucking go. If it's not clear what we're doing here, we're going to go through the team's champion stage, legend stage challenges. So the teams that finished their tournament in the champion stage the team that finished their tournament in the legend stage so these eight teams and then the eight teams that got knocked out in the challenger stage we'll do it like that we'll do separate videos keep things quick fresh pacey exciting ba bam so starting with nip obviously their rmr run put them straight into the legend stage as we can see down here and they kind of got through the legend stage pretty much scot-free um beat vitality fairly handedly i think vitality you know disappointed in this major beat cloud nine another team that disappointed a little bit of this major um obviously lost to navi i think navi ramped up as this event went on they were pretty decent in the legend stage but by the time they got to playoffs they were even better like so this result isn't necessarily a shame and then a 2-0 over furia this is actually one of these series that really impressed me from nip they handedly beat furia um, I had Furia as like a potential kind of top five team coming into this major. I expected them to get sort of in and around the semi-final uh, kind of area. Um, in the end, they kind of disappointed and that's often what Furia sort of do. I think just because of their style, but we'll talk more about Furia um in a little bit so yeah a solid if somewhat unspectacular run through the legend stage you look at the teams they played and you would think like wow this is actually pretty legit but if you look didn't qualify for the playoffs didn't qualify for the playoffs so two of the teams they beat were they really that good at this major um but this result is legit i think despite the fact furia ended up not going too far once the playoffs came around uh, and then obviously they got a tough draw facing the eventual winners. Now, NIP, I think they have to get an A- minus for this run. I think they exceeded my expectations personally. Having said that, I did actually put them in my pickums to get through to the playoffs. So by my reckoning, they didn't necessarily exceed expectations. But yeah, I think this was actually a pretty good run. I think... Essa Tag showed a little bit of promise on the AWP. Still obviously has some way to go if he's going to be Nip's primary, but he showed some promise. Um, I think Brolan was good throughout the tournament. Rez a little bit disappointing for sure. I think he didn't have a tournament up to the par of the year that he's had so far. And honestly, if you look at the ratings from this FaZe match, I think he's a lot of the reason that they couldn't potentially be a little bit more competitive against FaZe. Honestly, looking at this here, um, this was a relatively competitive series. Like, obviously, they took overpass. They had chances to get closer on Nuke and Inferno. Um, and I think Inferno will be a little bit disappointing because Nip are pretty good on Inferno. But I think when this is the, the look for the team, Hampus is, is top fragging by a long way and really looking like the carry force of the team. These are the times when Nip don't look their strongest. I think when Hampus is having to bail them out with his very... I don't want to call it scrimmy, but he's very unpredictable. He's quite aggressive. He looks for gaps based on timings and intuition. It's not the most consistent style of play when he's doing it all the time. It's great when it's within a system and he's got star players who can form the framework and he just has to do that to push them over the edge. When it's their sole game plan, like it kind of was at points in this series... Yeah, I'm not convinced that's a version of NIP that can do very well. I also think NIP have to get props for taking a map off of the eventual winners. I mean, Spirit played really effing well in this series and, and couldn't do it. And then Na'Vi obviously couldn't do it, despite probably maybe being the better team on Inferno. So I think Nip definitely get a lot of credit uh, being one of only two teams that, that... Oh, three teams took a map off them. Yeah, Copenhagen Flames. Fuck! But the point stands, FaZe were tough to beat in this major. FaZe went on to be eventual winners. Uh, maybe an A- minus is a little bit generous. I'm going to go B+. Plus. They beat some good teams. They beat some teams you'd expect them to. They show promise. They look decent with this Brolan version of the lineup. And I think there's definitely... The proof of concept was there, let's say. Room for growth. Need to see Rez step it up at like the again, Rez just disappointed at a big tournament. He does this a lot. Like he's got so much talent, he's so good. 
and he just goes disappearing at certain times. And then Esetag definitely has room to grow as an AWPer. But yeah, we'll go B plus for NIP. A minus, probably a bit generous. B plus for NIP. Next up, we have the aforementioned Furia. Now, they kind of got banged out 2-0 pretty convincingly by Spirit. That was disappointing. Um, but their Legend stage was okay. Obviously, they came through it 3-2. to two, uh, Had a Legend spot anyway, so didn't play in the Challengers. And if you look at this, it's like, yeah, they lost to Spirit. They beat Liquid and Big. I don't know how many really decent teams um, Furia beat, to be honest. I think the one result which you're looking at where you're like, hmm, is the G2 one. Um, that one's hard to kind of peg because, I'm again, I'm not sure where G2 are right now. G2 really seem to rely on Monacy at this event, which I think is uncharacteristic. Uh, Nico was kind of bleh. Hunter had his moments, but was kind of bled overall. Alexi B was an absolute fucking liability on the frag in front. He looked mechanically really fucking poor at this major. Um, yeah, just missing like basic frags that hit a pro player should be getting every day of the week. That was really not impressive from from G2's point of view. So it's like we'll talk about G2 more obviously in a different video, but just in terms of that being the like supposed good team that Furia kind of beat I don't know it looks kind of sus a little bit I gotta be honest I'm sat here looking at like a top eight finish at a major and thinking this from Furia is like a pretty weak top eight finish as far as top eight finishes go and this isn't me shitting on Furia I like Furia as a team I thought they were probably going to be a semi-finalist and like run someone close in the semi-finals that was my kind of pre-tournament like idea in my head and they just didn't like do it at all um and didn't really look that great in general like only really beating liquid shit team well in the context of this legend stage like liquid just got bodied by like everyone they just got beaten convincingly and like vitality didn't even make it out of the stage like we saw fury get banged out in playoffs you know, basically, I think this for a top eight runner, a major was pretty weak from Furia. I'm going to give them a C plus. I think my expectation was playoffs. My expectation, honestly, was semifinals. But like my my borderline or my baseline expectation was playoffs. And they met that, um, but didn't go really any further. No, I'm just going to give them a straight up C, actually. I think Furia. I think this is a pretty poor top eight finish as top eight finishes go. This isn't even me hating on Furia. Like I say, I like Furia as a team. I just think, yeah, I was expecting more of them out of this major. And I think, yes, Spirit were very good this major. They had an absolutely outstanding performance. Obviously, running FaZe really close even in this semi-final. Um, but FaZe showed that experience could get you over the line. And FaZe did it in two maps. I would have at least expected Furia to go three maps with Spirit. I would have at least expected this series to be close, and it really wasn't. So yeah, Furia get a C from me. It, it was not for a top eight finish. This was pretty weak. Next up, we have Copenhagen Flames. Um, You would think Copenhagen Flames kind of would get a similar prediction to Furia. However, I didn't expect Copenhagen Flames to make the playoffs. So already Copenhagen Flames get a decent grade because they exceeded expectations in my eyes. Um, really, you know, ignoring this against Ents because it was pretty convincing. Ents were definitely the better team in this series. Um, we need to, I think, look a little bit at their run through the legend stage and... Bad News Eagles, okay. You're not going to get huge amounts of credit from me for that result because Bad News Eagles were an 3 team and had clear deficiencies and flaws. Beating N16-8, that is legit. They took a map off Spirit and were sort of close in this series. The problem is, is that these two maps were like not great. So like, yes, you win your own map convincingly, but then you lose the next two relatively convincingly. Not the best look. But I will say it's like it's decent. Spirit again showed they were a good team, at least for this major. Whether they'll go on to be a good team, I don't know. Um, have a decent series against FaZe and then beat Imperial. This is actually like pretty impressive resume, to be honest. Like you're running Spirit and FaZe close, who were both top four finishers, FaZe the eventual winners. 
I, I mean, I say close, reasonably close, like, you know, two close maps and then you get spanked out on the third and final. OK, that happens. Um, this is like unacceptable, allowing phase 13 rounds on the T side and nuke like Jesus Christ. If you're going to let nuke through, you can't get 13 toed on your CT side. Come on, guys. Fuck me. That's bad. But yeah, I, I think they've got to get a B of some kind because then they went and they did the business against Imperial who, you know, Imperial had shown an ability to like, you know, they beat Cloud9 for fuck's sake. You know, they convincingly beat Bad News Eagles. They knocked Forza out who looked absolutely hot as fuck in the previous stage. So, you know, Copenhagen Flames resume, I think is stronger than Furious having finished at the same point and they had lesser expectations from me going into it. So yeah gotta be honest copenhagen flames they're getting a b plus i think it was a really good major from them top eight is amazing the only reason they just i would have put them in the a's if they'd not been so convincingly kind of spanked on the body by ends uh definitely could say that this got to them like the pressure of being this late in a big tournament on a big stage for sure but ends haven't played like tons of stages themselves so like some of these players have barely played lands let alone on stages so yeah that's the thing that like shaves it off an a for me and gives them a b plus is just they were like kind of spanked in this court final but regardless fantastic run from flames amazing for them to put to bed the demons from the previous major where they were again looking like they were going to make the playoffs and they managed to kind of choke it away in three series they were 2-0 up it, it looked like it might be the same here they're 2-0 up it looks like they're choking it away and then they bring it home so fair play to copenhagen flames you get a b plus and a little thumbs up from the dumps right who are we rocking with now heroic so heroic 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 oh dearie dearie me um this is gonna be a tough one right because uh this is not convincing for me liquid don't get much credit for lost to spirit spirit showed they're a decent team i'm going to keep saying it at this major so you know you have to look at spirit as a top four finisher when looking back at it in retrospect just squeaked over the line in a very competitive vertigo with g2 on the fence as to how good g2 were this major lose to ends and actually it's convincing they squeak their own pick and then are pretty handily beaten on the next two maps. So looking at this resume, it's not that strong. You get a little, you get a decent amount of credit for beating Vitality. All right, Vitality were like on the cusp, ultimately not good enough. Pretty handily beaten by Ents, although Ents are probably a top four team in the world right now. I just think with the expectations for heroic, we're looking at heroic to be on that level, to be in a top four team, to be a top four caliber and quality of team. And they just looked short of it at this major. And they've looked short of it for a while now. I'm I'm really turned off by this heroic lineup at this point. Um, I think this is a problem. If Cadian is gonna be the carry, no, that can't be the case. Cadian you know, as good as he has been at times for Heroic and the huge plays and stuff, he is just not a top-tier caliber of, of Fragger. He just isn't. And so if he's the guy who's leading the way for you in, in important series, probably an issue. We can't see this from Refresh. This just isn't good enough. Um, and yeah, I'm just at the point on this lineup now where they've they've kind of flopped at the key moments so many times and they've just disappeared in so many key playoff series that I'm just kind of out on this five-man lineup. I think something has to change. I don't know what it even is. I don't think there's an obvious... I would say removing Refresh or Tess who are the two recent, I think, underperformers in the key in the key points for Heroic. That's probably the most obvious, is removing one of these two. Shush gets a lot of shit rolls. I don't think you can remove Shush because he's so consistent from shitty rolls. You can't remove Stan because he's the obvious star. Probably can't remove Caden because I think he's kind of the beating heart of the team. He's the in-game leader. And he, he's perfectly serviceable at what he does, Caden. He's never, I don't think, been a massive problem in terms of fragging for Heroic. I think it's Tessis or Refresh that, like, yeah, just, just disappointing, man. And and it's just again and again and again, Heroic seem poised, seem set up, seem in a good space to maybe, like, do something meaningful. like. And they just can't do it on LAN in high pressure games. So yeah, Heroic, they're actually going to get a C- minus from me. I think playoffs was the bare minimum expectation and they did achieve that. But like, 
yeah not going any further yeah okay they got like not the easiest draw but then you look at their resume i just think it was again not the strongest top eight out of all the teams that got top eight their, I don't think their run, uh, their running was quite as weak as Furious, but it, it wasn't that far off. And so for me, yeah, they're gonna get a C minus. It was like the bottom of the barrel in terms of the bare minimum expectations. That finishes up the fifth to eighths and takes us on to Spirit. Oh boy, this is an exciting one. Now, Team Spirits um, may just started all the way back. I was gonna scroll down and click on it, but fuck it, we don't need to look at the challenger stage. They bodied it. Legend stage, they body it. A quarter final against Furia, they body it. Spirit get an S. Spirit just get a fucking S. They came into this tournament with no expectations whatsoever from anyone. They were the youngest team in attendance. They're a brand new roster, basically. Like, Patsy had been their sixth man at points the previous year and was shit, to be honest. Wasn't very good. And suddenly comes into this tournament and is like you know, not in the playoff series, but in some of the other fucking games, he was absolutely popping. Siren was amazing as, like, just a super, super stable, like, anchor-type player. You know, basically a turret, especially on CT. He's just going to sit in one fucking spot, pretty much, and just mow you down. Chopper, I've always lamented Chopper as an in-game leader in the previous iterations of Spirit because it, it looked like they weren't led very well, but I'm starting to think maybe there were problems with the personnel more so than the in-game leadership because he's fucking fragging well and leading well here. Magix is a fucking revelation, man. Now that he's gotten, like, you know, on this new version of Spirit, he's looking way, way better. And Dexter's Dexter, man. Dexter's the truth. He's a sick orper. Um, you know, I fully expect one day to see him on like a Navi versus Pro, like huge name in the CIS region. There's not much more you can say. Spirit get the S, man. They were so good throughout. They fucking bodied Furia. Like this just wasn't even that close. They beat Furia at their own game almost. Like they were thriving in the chaos as much as Furia were. You know, they took down some legit names. Furia again, Heroic, Copenhagen Flames, like decent teams. All of these for sure. And like just confidently 3 0'd. Yeah, Spirit get an S. It was a fucking sick run. I hope to see more from this very young Spirit team. They've got chops, man. And, you know, Patsy, like I say, dude, that guy was crazy, his impact, man. He was making some nuts plays, some crazy, again, timings and intuition-based pushes. Um, you know, he had, like, that Furia element. And it was so fitting that they played in the quarterfinals because Spirit had a lot of, like, the fury are about them, like, very aggressive, very unafraid. They were going to play their own game. Yeah. Spirit, you get, like, full tippity, not S+, plus, but S, for sure. Nice one. Right, that moves us on, obviously, to talk about Ents, the other semi-finalists. I think Ents are going to be disappointed about this one. Honestly, this looked like Simple got in their heads and they hit a bit of a mental barrier here. This is not the first time that Na'Vi have been the team that Ents have drawn. Um, it's actually kind of poetic. Every time Ents have pretty much gotten through to a playoffs and they're getting to that point where you're like, oh my god, if they go one step further, then this is really, really like magical stuff. And it always seems to be Na'Vi you stand in their way and say, nah, fuck off, lads. You're not quite ready yet. Um, yeah, they just didn't really play up to the level I think we've seen from them in the tournament. I think if we saw Ence's level from the rest of the tournament in this game, it would have been closer. Na'Vi may still very well have won because Na'Vi kind of seemed to hit their stride in the quarters and semis um, and parts of this grand final. Although, you know, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, it just seemed like here Simple massively got in Ence's heads and just full disrespect played them and just basically solo won the game. And I think it, a lot of it was mental, to be honest. I think from the outside watching it, it looked like Simple got in Ence's heads. Having said that, Ence looked fucking amazing for the rest of the event. Two old Copenhagen Flames banged those guys out. And Fl Copenhagen Flames and Ence are the two teams that... Six months ago, eight months ago, you would have looked to put them on a level pegging. And they showed how far they've come by just confidently brushing Copenhagen Flames aside here, man. And then, um, you know, in the legend stage, they beat the eventual winner's phase. Yes, lost to Copenhagen Flames. Funny in it how that all works. Beat Outsiders are a decent team. Pretty comfortably beat Heroic here, who are again a decent team. 
I think Ents showed exactly where there are. They're in that sort of like upper echelon, that top tier, I would say, that contains sort of like FaZe, Na'Vi, Ents. Ents are definitely in there. I think, honestly, Ents are a top three team in the world. Like, and I know they're at number three right now, but they really, really showed it at this major. I think FaZe are clearly number one. And I think over a tournament, you're going to struggle to find a team that beat FaZe. I think Na'Vi probably are number two right now. Uh, again, I think they've just got so much skill, so much experience that they're just going to overpower a lot of teams, particularly when crunch time comes. Ents are just a tier above. It would have been great to see Ents play Spirit. That would have been fascinating at this major specifically. But overall, Ents are definitely the third best team in the world. I think comfortably, until we see more from Spirit, I can't give them too much credit in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, Ents just continue to impress, continue to grow. And I think they're going to continue for the rest of the year, just challenging for titles. I think they'll win something beast. I think they'll win something decent, something big. Snappy and Co deserve so much credit, man. And what a team they are to watch as well. Again, they have a little bit of that. I'm going to say the Furia because the Furia are the kind of the team that introduced this like relentless aggression to the top tier of Counter Strike in the kind of modern era. Um, but Ents are, are kind of similar, aggressive. A lot of agency and responsibility is given to individual players to make plays. And yet they somehow tie it all together and make it look cohesive as well. Um, you know, Snappy's obviously a fantastic in-game leader. Manon, revelation, aggressive, playmaky boy. Yeah, just love it from Ents and expect to see them do more this year. They get an A from me. I My minimum expectation was honestly Legend stage. I would have forgiven them not making playoffs because... You know, a lot of these teams haven't... A lot of these players, sorry, haven't played many lands and on big stages and stuff, but it didn't seem to get to them until the semi. So I think making quarterfinals already got them a B for me. The confident way they swept through Copenhagen Flames and just one of the better teams performing at the tournament, like in terms of tournament performance. Um, you know, we go back and just remind ourselves they lost to the two semi-finalists. So in terms of as a, a performer... Copenhagen Flames were one of the best performers at the tournament. You know, this was a little disappointing, but I don't think it takes too much of the shine off it. I probably would have expected them to get beaten by Na'Vi anyway. Yeah, an A- minus for me. An A-, minus, just because this just takes a little, just a smidgen of the sheen off the run. Just, just a little bit, enough to make me go, yeah, it's a minus. But regardless, fantastic run from Ents. They're absolutely slapping titties at the moment. Fair fucking play. That means we've obviously got to talk about the second place team, Na'Vi. Now, this is a weird one, right? So I came in with expectations for Na'Vi. I did put them on my pickums to make the final. I think the bare minimum expectation for me was a top four. So I think they at least get a decent grade because they exceeded my bare minimum expectation and actually matched my kind of like more reasonable expectation but honestly like i say would not have been shocked to see navi not make the final looking at their run they bodied ends very good team third best team in the world like i say right now pretty decent showing against heroic all things considered, had to squeak it over the line in Ancient, needed a really big performance from Electronic, but okay, they got the job done, and they looked very convincing by the time Nuke rolled around. 3-0 the Legend stage, bit of a squeaky one against G2. Okay, first game of the tournament, we know what Na'Vi are like. And then they put Big to bed, and then they pretty convincingly put Nip to bed. I don't know, it wasn't Na'Vi returning to their Imperious best, right? It wasn't that, and we're probably, I mean, I don't think the lineup is going to survive, right, the post-major shuffle, but even if it did, I don't think we'd ever see the level of dominance that we saw that Na'Vi get to. They hit that peak that is so hard to find, and once you find it, you have to hold on to it for as long as you fucking can, because it's so hard to get to that peak to to fit all the pieces together perfectly, to find the rhythm and also to to develop that aura that you can't be beaten. Um, and once that aura fades a bit or is cracked, 
it's just not there anymore. You can't half have that aura. It's either there or it's not. And I think, unfortunately, it's not there for Na'Vi anymore, obviously. Now, this actual performance of the Major was pretty good. They had a pretty decent resume of wins. Like, they beat G2, they beat Big, they beat Nip, they beat Heroic, and they beat Ents. Like, it, it's almost ramping up in difficulty there. You get G2 and Big who are like, you know they're not bad teams by any stretch of the imagination, but they probably weren't quite at their peak for this major, but still decent. Nip, who actually looked pretty promising, looked like they put together um, a decent roster and also not peaked per se, because I think there's more for this Nip roster to give, but peaked within what you could expect, considering they just bought Brolan in and such. And then Heroic, who are, I would say, of a team who are not going to be too dissimilar of a level to Nip, even if they do kind of choke it away in important games and stuff. But Ents, no joke. There's no caveats or questions you can put on that result. <sighs> I think Na'Vi get a B from me. And that might seem weird giving a team that made the grand finals of the major a B. I mean, I'll give them a B plus. I'll give them a B plus. And I'll explain this to you. No, okay, we'll go A minus. We'll go A minus after a lot of consideration. It's really hard because it's hard not to judge this Navi by the standards of Stockholm of last year, where they just they fucking walked over the major in Stockholm. They literally just cruised it, never really getting into top gear. Um and so this is such a big drop off, and it's only the next major that it, it's so hard not to like taint your mind with that picture of dominance i have to though be fair and go based on what coming into this tournament were my actual fair expectations based on like analyzing recent performances and such and so they met the bare minimum and exceeded it they met the realistic expectations i had which was to make the grand final and i think i actually put navi as winning on my pickums that was more because I expected I expected a closer grand final, honestly. And I think if Rain doesn't just go fucking thermonuclear, it is a much closer grand final. Oh god. I can't really fully explain why they're getting an A minus um and why I was leaning towards giving them a B. I think just because we know what this Navi can do. I think the grand final I I it wasn't as close as I would have liked. They actually probably should have won Inferno. Having gone 08, they were actually the better team, I think, for the majority. It was just Carrigan came up with some fucking humongous plays when FaZe really desperately needed it. And then Nuke wasn't really that close. It was very convincing. It was fairly convincing, I should say, for FaZe. Um, if you were watching the game, it felt a little bit closer, maybe at times, than it was because Na'Vi you know, won some crazy rounds. There's that um, force buy that ended with a 1v2 Deagle clutch from Bit, for example. But actually, yeah. And, you know, Simple wasn't good this final. Electronic was a good... Perfecto was the only really good Na'Vi player in this final. Perfecto desperately tried to bring Inferno back and was, was decent in the nuke. <sighs> yeah, they get an A-. minus. I can't exactly explain to you why. That just, to me, seems like the fair grade. And if you don't like it, deal with it. That obviously brings us to the final boys of FaZe. Um, FaZe get an S+. Um, this was a, a really impressive major if you look at the resume. They beat the reigning champions. They did it actually 2-0 reasonably convincingly. Obviously Inferno could have gone a different way, but Nuke was pretty convincing. They 2 owed Spirit, and Spirit pushed them all the fucking way and was so... I think this is the thing that gives FaZe, like, their S plus for me, is that it wasn't, like, Na'Vi's S run through the Stockholm Major, where Na'Vi just crushed everyone. FaZe were tested by teams. FaZe had some very good teams, some very promising teams, push them all the way. And every single time they came up trumps when it mattered, they had the clutches, they had the big individual performances, they had the switch-ups tactically, 
they had just everything that a team needs to be clutch in a massive event and to take the trophy home, which they showed by taking the trophy home. Um, obviously, the narrative aspects are just delicious about Faze winning. Um, you know, Carrigan finally gets his major. Carrigan and Rain put behind them the heartbreak of Boston and dropping that 15-11 lead to Cloud9. One of the maps they do it on is Inferno in close fashion. I'm sure at some point to Rain or Carrigan, a little flicker of the demons of Boston must have just flashed through their brains for a brief millisecond and they, they did it. They got it over the line. You know, they finally get this roster together with Rops that Carrigan has wanted for so long. And it's it's winning and it's winning multiple tournaments and a major. You know, Twist being the first Canadian to win a major. It's the first international roster to win a major. There's just so many reasons why this is such an inspiring win. Um, and, you know, pair it with the Katowice story and then the ESL Pro League story, you know, winning with a stand-in and then Rain comes back and they win an event again, showing it's not a fluke, showing it's not, you know, minus Rain plus JKS. And then Rain comes in as the MVP of this tournament. It, there are just so many storyline and narrative angles that it, it blows the mind and every single one of them is like a fucking movie, quite frankly. Um there will likely not be very many more poetic and narrative laden major runs ever probably they get an s plus because the narratives are also good they played so many good teams here and beat them all they showed so many clutch moments they showed a resiliency that was just undeniable and then you know looking at rain here man what the fuck, dude? He just rolled the years back and went fucking bananas across the major. Look at that impact rating, man. But also, specifically, bam and bam. He was so key in the two biggest and most difficult series FaZe had to play. S plus for FaZe, S plus for Rain. Long live Counter-Strike. This eSport kicks the living shit out of any other. Don't fucking at me if you have a different opinion because you're wrong. Peace out, boys and girls.